another really good analogy that he had in that in that um, book where and it, and it applies so well to the modern day man so well especially if anyone else is in is out there that that's in like that corporate scre- scheme and uh the rat race you know mm-hmm. um so like it's like like in north america whether you're in canada or us it runs on this it's all the same it's all the same thing it's a machine right capitalism it's a machine and so most companies most corporates doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter if they're rated top 20 best employers in north america it doesn't get doesn't matter it's all the same shit you got so basically when you have a business you got two ways to run your business the most common ways you can run it as a machine as an effort to picture an engine a vehicle engine right so you've got you've got your ford f-150 and it's running 24 7. just run and run and run chug 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 you're just getting every little bit you can out of that engine and when a part finally breaks in that engine because it's had too much you just rip that part out throw it in the garbage and put a new one in and you just keep freaking running it like it like it's like it was nothing so that's one way to run a business the other way to run a business is you could treat it like a garden so you can plant your seeds you can you can water your seeds every day you can nurture it once the plants start to grow you can massage your leaves you can massage massage the stems you know it's gonna take you a long time it's gonna take you a damn long time but eventually that garden is gonna bloom and it's gonna be beautiful that's another way to run a business so basically what you have is when you've got business a the machine the engine and business b the garden business a in the short term it's going to generate you a lot of money in the short term business, but, but long term, it's not because you're not going to have the longevity through your employees. You're going to have a lot of turnaround rate, right? Because people aren't going to be happy. They're going to get unmotivated. They're going to get depressed or whatever the hell it is. They're working too many, too many hours, whatever. Or in business B, you're going to have people that are extremely motivated. The morale is going to be extremely high. They're getting treated well. They're going to feel like they're part of the community. They're going to feel like they're part of the team. And in the long run, when you have people that are working, that are happy with what they're doing, and happy with the workplace that they're in, naturally your productivity is gonna is gonna be through the roof, right? Yep. It's, it's just a very very simple science. Um, so that's anyway. So so I kind of married those two points together, and that's kind of where that whole idea came from. Me, it was like because at the time, in my opinion, the thing that that company was suffering from, and again, I got to see it because I was in like a mid management level. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was lucky enough that I was getting exposure to some of the top management, but I got a lot of exposure to the bottom. And I also worked my way up the ladder at that company to get to where I was. So I knew what it was like. And um, that that company could have really, really, really benefited, I think, from someone to, to do that for them. Because uh, it just, again, the turnaround huh. rate was so, it was like a McDonald's in there, bro. It was like a McDonald's, man. It was like, I, I almost got to a point where I didn't even want to remember people's names because I was like, you're not going to be here in another month anyways. It doesn't matter. Do you think... <laughs> that when you're lining people up and you're you get this information and you put into whatever buckets you put it into is that do you think it's a good management tool too to figure out what strategies would be best to manage and coach somebody going through like once you find those things 100 percent, man like Honestly, when I started managing those the team of the like the team of like when I had like three I think at the most I ever had was I think it was just three, four guys, four guys underneath me. And all gone, baby. Finished. Actually, I actually gotta go. I gotta go to refill, actually. Um, I, uh, so when I was managing those guys on my own time, when I would, when I was at home, I would actually, I would, on my computer, I kept a list. And like each individual, each individual employee I had working under me, I kept a list. And I just, I just wrote stuff down about them. What are they like? What are they not like? What are they good at doing at this company like in their role what are they not good at doing in this role why are they not good at doing it or why are they good at it um you know and then again i, I like some of the personal stuff that they that they would like they liked i, I kind of took that down um like you know for example the one guy um he was really outdoorsy he loved hunting he loved fishing he was really into motocross and like motorbiking and stuff he's really good he's really good at it apparently uh, actually i told him i go watch him this year and take some photos and videos for him but uh, anyways he liked being outside. Okay. Put that guy in a site position. So, so when I, when I kind of yeah. restructured how my team worked, um, I actually ended up taking on more work than I, I should have as a project manager, um, just to supplement for this, but I let him spend more time on site. And because I let him spend more time on site, he started learning things like so quick, the guys, the guy, like the crew members, the crew, like the crew workers, the foreman and the laborers spoke so highly of him. And they did not speak highly of people at that company, man. 
they did not like like but anyways they loved that kid and and man he did so freaking well <laughs> like the the uh the upper management they loved him at one point my boss who was at the time that he was the construction he's actually the general manager now but he was the construction manager at the time he literally said this is the best project coordinator that we have the very mm-hmm. best project coordinator that we have in the office is this kid and like and and I honestly believe is because I just I put him I oh, I didn't even put him there I let him be in the position that he wanted to be in right and he still did all of the stuff he had to do on the back end that man that kid that kid would stay until eight or nine o'clock at night we would start at six thirty seven o'clock in the morning and we were there because the project we were running was crazy it was busy and we were grinding me and and that and the co op man same thing bro like Mikey he was hourly right so he freaking cake it. But, but, uh, man, those guys, man, every day. And it was funny too, because my, because like people used to be like, man, why are you still here? Like, why do you stay here so late? Like none of the other PMs are doing that. I was like, how am I going to let my freaking, the two guys that are working under, underneath me freaking work until nine o'clock at night and I'm going to go home at five 30. Yeah. Right, man. I'm going to stay here too. I'll, I'll, I'll be right in the trenches with them. I didn't really want to do it. I would rather rather live my life, but yeah. whatever, man, these two guys were grinding. They were trying to make something of themselves and and they're at the early and i was there too you know when i was 21 years old when i was 2019 working at some of these companies bro i was working 70 80 hours a week again same thing i was hourly so i was making good dough um (laughs) you know but like but and my managers used to i would now i've been lucky i've had amazing managers in my life man amazing managers in my life Um, that's probably why you want to do that back you want to reciprocate that back to 100 everybody else Hundred percent. I, w- I wouldn't. I wouldn't be where I was today without them. The the one the one manager. He's one of my best friends. If I get married, he's going to be up there with me. You yeah. know, like, and he's freaking. He just turned sixty on Friday. <laughs> you know, he's thirty years older than me. It's crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, man. So yeah. Anyways, it was just interesting putting him in that. Like I said, we put him in that position, and he, and he did so well. And then the same with the other kid, the co-op student. He was just really good on the computer, man. Really freaking good on the computer. He liked going out the site. He liked getting out there. So I let him go whenever he needed to. And plus that's how, like in the construction industry or anything else, that's how you learn. You see things, you're hands on, you know, like you're touching things, you're seeing things move. And like every day you go to the site and something, it's like a river. It's like something's changed, man. It's never the same day by day. It's never the same. Um, So you just, you just really start to learn things. Um, So, so anyways, he, he, he did that stuff, but like, man, on the computer, he was really good. And, uh, I just, I just let it, like, I didn't micromanage him. You know, I just, I let him do his thing. I let, again, I had to supplement. I had to do things that they both probably should have been doing that other coordinators were doing, um, that I just took over on my own, uh, to just make sure, cause obviously they still had to get done. But again, then these guys got to go out, they got to do what they wanted to do. And they became assets to the company, major assets. But, but well, the one guy actually, the, the, uh, the one kid that, uh, not the co-op, but the other kid. He actually left. He got an amazing job with the with uh with the region that he that he lives in. Amazing job, man. He's making more money than I am. It's crazy. He's twenty two years old, lives at home with his parents. It's crazy. Good for him though, man.